at 604, 603, sorry. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do not have any adjustments tonight. Approval of minutes, Wednesday, May 31st, 2023, workshop at 4.30 p.m. Recommendation to approve the minutes as presented. I'll make that recommendation. Thank you very much. Seconded by? Seconded. Melissa, thank you. All in favor? All in favor. Public comments? No, just to announce, it looks like the Zoom platform, we're having some problems accessing the Zoom platform. We think it may not be, it may be more Zoom related with that, so we will try to keep that on monitoring. But if there's anyone out there trying to access via Zoom, that platform is not working at the moment. Thank you. Communications, no. Committee reports, no. Moving on to superintendent's report. Sure, so uh, right off, um, first thing we'd like to do is recognize our uh, most recent graduate as um, our school committee representative. I want to uh, recognize John Paul. Um, John Paul has served on the school and as a school committee student representative for two years with that and done an outstanding job. John Paul brings a lot of different perspectives to um, his work on the school committee. He's involved in Key Club, National Honor Society, the Homecoming Committee. Uh, he was a big part of our schedule advisory committee with that. I know uh, he had a very uh, important role in that, that uh, it was great to hear his perspectives throughout that. He's also been on the leadership council. Uh, student athlete, he's played soccer and track and field all four years during high school. Outside of school, we were part of the water ski show um, with that and also a member of the Gunstock Outreach Program. He's uh, volunteered at, um, through your church, the Sanford Soccer Salvation Army, uh, and also done some adaptive water ski clinics as well for that. Um, and so uh, what I think really sums up John Paul was I was at a recent Rotary meeting where they recognized um, student scholarship winners and John Paul was a recipient of one of those scholarships. But I was at the Rotary meeting last week and it was Thursday morning. And if you remember, Thursday morning was following graduation and the project grad. And we had a guest speaker and the guest speaker was the chief of police from Kennebunk. And knowing uh, that you have interest in Homeland Security, that uh, the Rotary president reached out to John Paul and um, had invited you to the Rotary meeting knowing you might have some interest in the speaker. And so when I heard that, I said, oh, no, John Paul, I don't think he's going to be coming because he's been up all night as far as project graduation. <laughs> now... Little did I know that you had, you had let the uh, person know that you may be coming, but you didn't cancel. You said you were going to wait and make a game time decision at 5.30 in the morning. And sure enough, you texted to kind of say, it's been a long night. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. But I, I highlight that story because I think that shows the type of person you are, John Paul. Very, very considerate. Uh, I'm very conscientious. And so I know... Um, uh, I'm very appreciative, and I know I speak for the entire school committee, uh, for thanking you for all of your efforts. Even to come tonight, right, after being a graduate, uh, we couldn't be at the last meeting because it conflicted with uh, Senior Awards Night. But um, I know on behalf of us, we got you a little gift because you are headed to, it's Embry-Riddle, right? Um, in the fall, and as I mentioned, your interest in Homeland Security Intelligence uh, with that. So you're headed to Daytona Beach, Florida, and we've got your little gift card in there to help you with whatever it needs for you to be able to get there. So John Paul, on behalf of all of us, thank you, and we wish you nothing, but you deserve all the great things that are gonna happen to you with that. Yeah. Woo! 
um, and I don't know if there's ever an intro, that will go right into the Sanford Spotlight for us to be able to, and John Paul, we can kind of put you on the spot because we are interested in you probably talking about uh, last week's activities and the senior activities if you want to be able to shed some light on those. Yes, first of all, I'll just say thank you and it's been a great pleasure to be on here for the last two years. I've greatly enjoyed it and learned a lot. Didn't realize how much goes in behind the scenes to make a school function um, and definitely We'll keep some of this stuff in mind later on. Um, but last week, yes, a full week of graduation stuff for the seniors, uh, from marching practice to dance practice if you participated in the senior dance, um, senior awards, senior banquet, project grad, and actual graduation. Um, I mean, marching practice, as everybody knows, is a little long sometimes, but I think our class did quite well and got the hang of things pretty fast. Um, it was awesome to also do the senior dance after graduation. Um, and even though we had a little rain and a little technical difficulties with tripping a breaker, um, I think the ceremony went very well, and um, Project Grad was amazing, uh, up till 5 a.m. all night, um, but some great dinner and laser tag, a movie, a mentalist. Yeah, it was a great night and a great week. So. All right, so this week we'll be wrapping up the 2022-2023 school year for the Sanford School Department. Um, uh, it will be tomorrow, June 13th, uh, for the last day. And then there's been a lot of activities and events that have happened in kind of like the last few weeks. Um, but first off, the Sanford High School Library gave away like uh, quite a few free books to SHS students so they could continue their passion of reading over the summer. And then also last Friday started finals uh, for Sanford High School students. Um, so block one finals and block three were on Friday. Block two was actually today and then block four is gonna be tomorrow. And then um, since this is the last meeting, um, I just want to say I'm grateful to have the opportunity to serve on the school board committee. And then um, I look forward to um, continuing to fulfill my duties next year. So thank you. Um, and then finally, last week or two weeks ago, we decided the homecoming theme for next year. So we are going to be doing children's picture books. Um, so I'm not sure what the incoming sophomores or juniors have picked, but for our class, we are going with Oh, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, which will be very fun. Um, and then also, I just want to echo what Emma said. I'm very thankful for this opportunity. It's been a pleasure, so I'm excited for next year. And that's one of the advantages of senior. You get to pick the theme first, right? You pick the theme and which one you want to do. So that's awesome. Okay. Thank you very much, all of you, uh, with that. Do you want to kick off our last uh, school committees um, for the year, the uh, Sanford Spotlight? Yes. And it looks like... That's the picture there, I think, John Paul, of when people are getting ready to do the dance, yes. right? That yep. look like, kind of looks a little funky, but they're getting ready to, <laughs> they're getting ready to bust it out. <laughs> yes. Um, so last Wednesday, Sanford High School celebrated their 100, 130th commencement um, on Alumni Stadium, even with some drizzle, but eventually it cleared up into a beautiful night for celebration. Uh, for the class of 2023 graduates, the weather shift was a sim of the strength and perseverance of the past four years to get to graduation. Uh, Sanford Middle School JMG closing ceremony. A packed house was at the Sanford Middle School cafeteria on Tuesday for the school's JMG program closing ceremony. The ceremony was to celebrate students' success and hard work in the program. Sanford Middle School students, families, and staff were treated to a spaghetti dinner to kick off the ceremony following a singing of the national anthem for students uh, Courtney Orr and Sophia Randall, Ken, uh, Kenna Robinson and Leah Languas. I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Um, and then SRTC Text Exploration. As current students were wrapping up their school year, Sanford Regional Technical Center was busting at the seams, hosting nearly 1,400 eighth grader students from all nine partner schools for an event called Text Exploration. This happened over six different sessions in late May and early June. In advance of this experience at SRTC, all students were asked to complete an interest inventory and research SRTC and its 22 programs. During the visit, they were able to visit and experience three different programs of their choosing for 15 minutes each. The eighth grade students got to have hands-on hands -on experience from each program they visited. 
Um, at Sanford Middle School, Morgan Bailey received the Secretary of State's eighth grade citizenship award, um, which was awarded both for her academic excellence as well as her participation in band, chorus, field hockey, drama, dance, and also her various volunteer activities. Um, at MCS, they had their pre-K promotion ceremony on Thursday. The event was a great success with parents and staff coming together to celebrate with the students. The celebration was filled with fun activities for the students, including drawing and ice cream. There's a link for more of that. Um, at Pride Elementary, Mr. Fernandez's fourth grade students at Sanford Pride organized the lemonade stand to raise money for the um, Barbara Bush Children's Hospital last week. Um, in one day, they were able to raise $690, which is awesome. Um, there's another link for the school's newsletter. And at CJL, um, they had their pre-K graduation on Friday. The students, the students all received certificates for their hard work this year. Um, and the students' families were in attendance to watch them perform songs. There's another link for the school's newsletter. Um, at Sanford Community Adult Education, if you earned your high set or high school diploma at um, the adult education, um, their graduation is June 14th, 2023 at 7. Um, graduation will be held in their library. Um, they want to come to celebrate caps and gowns. Um, and yeah, so there's a number to call for um, invitation and tickets. And the Spartan Times article is about um, LJ McFarland and how he is participating in the Main Shrine Lobster Bowl um, on July 15th. It is a prestigious game played by the top senior football players in Maine, which is very exciting. And there's a link to read the rest of the article there. Um, and next up in the employee spotlight segment, uh, there's the Carl J. Lamb head custodian, Michael Deshais, um, who was recognized this week for all of his hard work in um, his school. So if you'd like to learn more about him and kind of what he's doing, um, there's kind of a little blurb below. And then also uh, the Stanford School Department, uh, they sent out um, a survey um, because they're looking to update their mission, vision, and core values. So they're seeking feedback from all of the members of the community. The information received will help a planning committee develop a draft that will be shared for additional feedback from stakeholders. And so there's kind of a link there um, with the survey, um, just some information, and the survey will be out June 30th of 2023. So um, just look for that. And then also uh, the Sanford School Legacy Foundation, um, they're a 501c3 organization which is specifically designed to receive funding from community donors to benefit all ages above and um, beyond to the regular budget of the Sanford School Department, the nonprofit in turn. Um, funds extras for initiatives such as the electrical uh, wiring program to enhance the educational opportunities here in Sanford. So there's more information there. And then also, uh, so Spartan Pride is uh, literally in the air. Uh, you'll see it and really feel it. So when the Sanford School Legacy Foundation flies the new banners at Sanford High School, and you'll have a chance to help them launch. So there's definitely that to look forward to. Um, there's a little link below to learn more about that. And then just some announcements that are coming up. The kindergarten registration is now open for the 2023-24 school year. So um, if you'd like to learn more about that, there's a link there. And also the deadline to register for travel soccer is June 23rd. So also there's some more information there. Um, and just make sure to get signed up before the 23rd. And then just some uh, additional links that are kind of always there is the City of Sanford, WSSR TV, Sanford Athletics Instagram, Spartan Times Online newspaper, Sanford Springvale News, and community announcements. So they're just there kind of like to keep you up to date with the school and the Stanford High School Department. So yeah. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks, John Paul. Excellent job. Well done. Really impressive. Obviously, we, we highlighted the Sanford High School graduation as a commencement activity, but then you can also look and see we celebrated pre-K and kindergarten. I just want to give a big thank you to all of our students uh, our staff, our administrators, our PTA, parent groups, for really putting on a lot of um, end of the year activities, kind of like some culminating events to be able to celebrate uh, the school year. And I know it's been, uh, I've been very proud to be able to witness and participate and watch all those kudos all the way around uh, as we've been able to really celebrate uh, a successful school, the end of a successful school year. I would just, to go along with what Mr. Nelson said, um, I got the privilege of um, helping a little bit with the project grad and the amount of work and effort an organization 
for that to happen for the seniors was a huge feat. And so I applaud all those officers of Project Grad 2023 for everything they did. Um, I think they approximately raised $44,000 to make that night happen. So um, I just a big shout out to 47, I'm corrected. Um, but a big shout out to all the families that helped um, with that fundraising effort. Okay, uh, yeah, awesome job all the way around. Uh, just another reminder that our 2023-2024 school budget referendum um, is scheduled for tomorrow. That's Tuesday, June 13th. The polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The polling places, Ward 1 is at Nassau Community Center, Ward 2 is at Sanford Christian Academy, and Ward 3 is at Sanford High School uh, and Sanford Regional Technical Center. Um, with that. So obviously if you've been following a lot of our meetings, talking a lot about budget, um, we had a lot of a series of budget workshops back in March with our City Council and the City Council did approve a combined city and school budget uh, for next year that includes a 2.3 percent increase uh, over the current budget. That uh, equates to 34 cent increase on the mill rate and that 2.3% increase means that taxes on a home valued at 250,000 would be $85 a year. Um, so I know I speak, I think for all of us, that we're very proud of this budget um, on what we're able to deliver. Uh, with that, we feel that it provides the necessary funding to support uh, all of our educational services that we st strive uh, to provide for our students. And it's also fair to taxpayers in light of, um, you know, what's been going on uh, with um, the, what was caused by the pandemic as well as just the increased costs of everything uh, to be able to do that. And I know if you look around a lot of other surrounding communities, very support, we're very proud uh, of this budget. So it is the only, um, it is the only item on the ballot uh, and I hear from people who have voted early that it's pretty simple. It's uh, really asking one question about supporting that budget uh, or not. So um, just encouraging people to, as they plan their day tomorrow, uh, do their best to try to find time to go out um, and support our schools. Next up, uh, I did want to talk about our um, main Department of Education school improvement identifications came out um, for 2023-2024. And we recently received word that Sanford High School, Sanford Middle School, and Sanford Pride have been identified by the main Department of Education as needing additional support. Maine's model of school support is an accountability system that measures the progress of Maine's public schools to inform schools, the state, and the federal government on how Maine schools are performing and then determine where additional support is needed throughout the state of Maine to help improve student achievement. I do want to point out, and it's important to note, that this is just one measure of our schools. It doesn't necessarily capture the great things that are happening in our schools on a daily basis. So you may be asking, how is progress measured? School progress is measured through key areas of school and student success, and these are called indicators, and they're based on data collected from schools annually. Those indicators include chronic absenteeism, and what that definition is, students absent for 10% or more of the days that they are enrolled, and that's either excused or unexcused. Uh, another indicator is academic achievement, mathematics, and literacy in grades uh, three through eight in the third year of high school. You may know those are our state assessment scores in math and literacy, and they compare those to state expectations. Another indicator is the progress in English language proficiency in grades K through 12, and so English learners progress towards meeting their annual growth goals. And then we also do academic progress for mathematics and literacy in grades three through eight. And what that does, it compares our students' state assessment scores in math and literacy from one year to the next. Another indicator is graduation rate at Sanford High School. And so uh, the school year data that was used to make that determination of support is 
school year and state assessment data back to 2018-2019. That was pre-pandemic. And the school year data and state assessment data of 2021-2022. And through this process, there's three tiers for designated support. And so there's tier one. And Sanford Middle School is at tier one, additional targeted support and improvement where this says there's one or more student populations experiencing challenges across all indicators. And for us, it was just one. Professional development will be available regionally and statewide uh, for us at no cost. Tier two is where Sanford High School and Sanford Pride Elementary fall. That's one or more of the same student populations consistently experiencing challenges over three years across all indicators. And when you're in this tier, uh, you have access to regional school leadership coach and schools will be responsible for developing and implementing a school level plan in partnership with stakeholders to include at least one evidence-based intervention. And then there's tier three, that's comprehensive supports and improvement. Right now, there's the potential that Carl J. Lamb may be landing in this tier. And these are Title I schools where all the student populations are experiencing challenges across all the indicators. And so due to all the student populations experiencing challenges across all the indicators but were not previously identified for Tier 3 in 2018 or 19. And so what this means is um, Carl J. Lamb will participate in the identification process again in this upcoming late fall of our next school year in 2023-2024. And if they're still experiencing challenges in all the student populations, then that may be school may be identified for tier three additional supports. I do want to point out, and I think it's really important to know, that our schools have um, seen some gains in some areas, even though they may have been identified for additional support. So next steps for that is, um, as we get ready for our administrative team meetings to wrap up the school year, we're gonna dig deeper into that data. That will allow us to set goals for improvement, and then we can also use the Department of Education as support. So that's just in case people are hearing, you're gonna see a lot of the schools are identified. We're not something where we're out there by ourselves uh, as we've been able to unpack that data. There's a lot of schools that have found themselves in those um, tier identifications for 23-24. Any I, questions? Yes, can I ask where does uh, Margaret Chase Smith fall? They were, right now, they were not identified as tier one, tier two, tier three. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to director's reports and we'll be hearing from Steve Boussier. Good evening. Um, the first thing I have to talk to you about this evening is a Stronger Connections grant. Uh, the main Department of Education is accepting applications for um, school administrative units who meet a poverty rate of above 35% to design and enhance initiatives that will promote safer, more inclusive, and positive school environments for all students, educators, and school staff. So the projects for this grant can fall under th one of three categories, or a combination of all three. And those buckets are school climate, mental health, and or social emotional learning, or school safety and emergency preparedness. The funds that are available to local school districts are up to a half a million dollars over the course of three years. Um, a key piece to this grant application is that projects, they can't fund current positions and there's a strong sustainability piece that needs to be in place. Um, our intent is we've had initial conversations as a central office team and during our 18 meeting this week, we'll be discussing how to best utilize these potential funds um, to support our efforts in relation to um, positive, positive behavioral supports for students and the continued mental health work that we're doing for our students. So um, to be continued, just want to make you aware of this potential opportunity out there for us. Some good news on the grant front. Um, the Sanford School Department and Sanford Pride Elementary School um, have been conditionally awarded the first 10 Community School Pilot Grant Award. award. Um, it's initial approval because there's a 15-day appeal process for school districts that were not selected, and so that's why it's conditional. If you remember, first 10 schools and communities are partnerships of school districts, elementary schools, early childhood programs, and community partners that come together to work on improving teaching, learning, and care for the whole child. 
Um, we are excited about this opportunity. Um, the newly formed leadership team is excited to begin working with the main DOE and the Education Development Center later this month. And the first step really with this grant is to hire a project leader um, that will be funded through the grant. And so this is an exciting opportunity as we work on building those partnerships um, with the community um, as students enter our school system. So good news on that front. Last thing I have to talk to you about this evening is school safety. Um, we conducted our final lockdown drills this past week. Um, overall, students and staff did a great job following our lockdown procedures. Um, over the course of the school year, we have placed a strong emphasis on school safety and we have made um, some great progress on that front. We have updated our crisis plans to include rally points, reunification sites, and we've reviewed and updated our reunification processes. We've trained staff in the ALICE model, which really was a mind shift from our current practice from years past. We've conduct, conducted evacuations to our rally points with staff and students. We've updated our alertus software, and that has consistently been operational um, as we've moved through the school year. We've installed safety shades in our buildings, and we're continuing the final step in that process at Sanford High School. And we've requested additional radio coverage at the Sanford High School. If you remember, that's a, a six-month pro process that involves the FCC and that is in, in the works um, for September um, with that. So we've made a lot of progress um, on that front. The administrative team, along with the SROs, will be discussing our next steps as we move into um, the summer and this fall on the safety front. And do folks have any questions on anything I mentioned this evening? Thank you so much, Steve. I just say kudos, <laughs> Steve, to you as well as the administrators and really all of the Sanford School Department for our safety efforts. That was something we identified as a priority and that is something that we've definitely, as you've outlined, made a lot of progress with and will continue to have that be a focus. So thank you, Steve, for overseeing that. Okay, Beth Lambert, it's your turn. Hello, everybody. A couple of quick updates from the high school for you tonight. Um, the first is around freshman teaming. Um, I spoke with Mr. Peterman this morning, and um, they have the two teams set up already. Um, each team has two English language arts teachers, two math teachers, a science and a social studies teacher. The reason there's two English and two math on each team is because those pair will have the students year long, and they will also be teaching seminar. So that's why they're doubled up. Um, one. Um, one team will have seminar block one and the other team will have seminar block five and that will ensure that the students are able to take the SRTC exploratories block five um, whether they're in block one or block five seminar they'll be able to do that um, and so we've been looking at curriculum and I have started the process of purchasing that so we're looking at um, it's called smarts curriculum for executive functioning it comes very highly recommended um, it's something that I did research on a while ago. Um, and we're also going to be repurchasing um, a program called School Connect. And it's something we used to use when we had freshman teaming about 15 years ago. Um, and that kind of leads us into the next piece, what I'm sharing with you tonight. We, were, um, we received a grant through the Maine Department of Education to implement BAR, which is short for Building Assets Reducing Risks. So um, many, many years ago, the high school um, was a recipient of a bar grant back then and that's how we implemented freshman teaming so this is kind of a perfect opportunity for us as we're beginning to do that again so there's a few different pieces to it um, that we have to kind of follow nothing that we haven't already put into our schedule we have to have an opportunity to teach I time which is their curriculum that we've used um, and, and Matt Peterman actually still has the old binder so we were sitting thumbing through it today um, and an opportunity for teachers and the teams to meet, which we already have done um, because of their prep times being together. There needs to be a coordinator, and that's something we haven't figured out yet. There's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of time that would be taken up as the coordinator. We're thinking maybe one of the administrators would do that. They just meet um, every, they meet ten times over the year with the bar coach, um, and we have access to that bar coach all year long um, for support. 
And so what does, what does BAR do? It's a very interesting program, so I don't know if you've ever heard of the 40 assets, developmental assets, that they talk about um, that if a student has all of them, or for however many they don't have, they might often um, come into contact with struggles. So they have different, it's kind of hard to explain, but there's internal access assets and intern, internal and external assets. There are things like um, learning positive values, social competencies, understanding boundaries and expectations, constructive use of time. So it, it's very much what freshman seminar used to do and is gonna do again. So, um, and that's where the School Connect curriculum plays in very nicely because it actually addresses most of those. And it is also a curriculum that we used in the past. So we are um, on a good heading and the bar will also pay for teaming, uh, for training this summer. Um, for our freshman team, so Matt Peterman is very excited about it, as well as Amanda Doyle and the other members of the team um, to have that opportunity, so any questions? I just want to say it's exciting. It is very exciting. To hear all the work, and it's a tremendous amount of work, so thank you to everyone. I was, uh, I was like, I want to go back and teach seminars. I used to mm. love seminars. Well, <laughs> it, 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 the grant's timely, right? In terms of what Perfect. we were able to do, yes. it really came, lines right up yep. in terms and, of what And because we've done this before, like Matt Peterman, Amanda Doyle, myself, and several other teachers that are still in the district, and Aaron Tremblay, we all lived seminar the previous time, so we really think that that one year of support will kind of get us back where we need to be um, so it's perfect we're really excited about it so thank you okay we're moving on to new business first is 2023-2024 school committee dates sure so as we wrap up 2022-2023 we're starting to look ahead to the 2023-2024 school year and so what you have uh, this evening is a uh, draft of a meeting schedule. Um, we're going to try to follow what we've, there's been some similarities to what we've done in the past. Uh, we will have a meeting um, scheduled for Monday, August 21st. Uh, in the past, we would never have a scheduled August meeting. We'd always end up having one anyways. So this year we went ahead and scheduled it, uh, put that right onto the um, uh, onto the schedule. We'll start the year, uh, typically what we like to do is the first Monday and the third Monday of each month, unless of course those land on a holiday. So right out of the gate in September, that first Monday in September is Labor Day holiday. So we will meet the second and third Mondays and typically we've used those meetings to kick off the opening of school and report out from the different areas. And then uh, we move right into um, October, November, and December. We'll be able to do the first and third uh, Mondays. In those situations, one thing that's probably a little bit different is this year we're looking to have that second meeting of the month to really be focused as a school meeting workshop. We're really going to try to dig into uh, what may be particular topics. Obviously, if there is the need to have a brief meeting, uh, business-wise, we can do that uh, easily, but I think you'll see the business meeting really be the first Monday of the month, and the school that will allow us to do school committee workshops and dig into other uh, topics uh, deeper. Uh, when we come back in Monday, we're around New Year's Day and the Martin Luther King holiday, so there we'll meet on the 8th and the 22nd. February we'll meet on the 5th. The third uh, Monday is during the school vacation, so we'll meet the fourth Monday there, and then we'll come back in March and do the first and third again. Uh, in April, we'll do the first Monday of the month. The third one is right around um, the April vacation, so we'll bump that to the following week. And then in May, we're looking at May 6th and May 20th, and then right now we're looking at having one meeting in June um, to work around some of those uh, end of the year activities, senior activities, and wrap up the school year. So that's what I present to you this evening um, to, um, for approval. I would like love to make a motion to, are we accepting? Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> for the school committee dates for 2023-2024. Okay. Seconded. 
Seconded. Thank you very much, Kelly. All in favor? All in favor. Thank you. And as always, those come with a little asterisk when life gets in the way and things happen and come back, we'll always be flexible, but that gives us at least for some planning purposes to be able to look ahead. Uh, can I take the next item? Sure. Sure. So next item is a new business number two, um, and we've uh, been in uh, negotiations with our uh, Sanford School Administrators Association, and uh, those uh, negotiations have gone very well. Uh, today we reached a tentative agreement. We're looking at a three-year contract uh, that would be beginning this July and going through June of uh, 2026. Just to give an overview of the three-year contract, you're looking at a wage increase uh, each year of 3%. Uh, we also are having, um, with part of that wage increase at 3%, also the insurance, there's no changes to the insurance protection that are currently in place with um, an 80%, 20% share. Uh, but what is a change is we are gonna be adding an administrator position to this um, bargaining unit and it's gonna be the director of school counseling in uh, grades pre-K through grade 12. And so we will be placing that what used to be a level 4A in our new numbering system, it's gonna be level five. Uh, with that, uh, for 210 days in fiscal year 2024, and we've got an updated job description for that position. Also, by adding that, we've also made another adjustment of moving the special education assistant director to move that up to a level four uh, for fiscal year 2024. There are no changes to the longevity uh, really no, very little of any word changes throughout the contract. We really did a nice job in our previous contract of cleaning up a lot of the language that needed to be updated. Uh, in this one, we will formalize that the Juneteenth holiday will be added to the holidays and uh, we'll be updating uh, Indigenous Peoples Day as well. So that's what you have this evening. And uh, what we're recommending is, since this is our last scheduled meeting, uh, we're recommending to ratify the um, Sanford School Administrators Association contract uh, as presented pending the administrator's union's approval. As I said, we rent that, reached that tentative agreement earlier today. The administrators will be voting on their end of it uh, on Wednesday. And so by taking the action tonight and making that pending, as long as they're okay, then we'll be able to move this along and begin it right at the beginning of July. Okay. Are we going to ratify the contract as presented pending administrator approval? I'll make that motion. Administrator union approval, sorry. I'll make that motion. Make that motion, thank you, Kelly. Um, seconded? I'll second. Thank you very much. All in favor? I'm going to abstain. Okay, thank you very much. All in favor? The rest of us. Okay, moving on to bid awards. Cheryl Fournier. Feels funny to be talking about snow plowing here in June, but Cheryl, it's all but yours. Here we are. Don't <laughs> jinx us. Don't jinx us. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I think I felt like it was just something we should not be doing this early, but. Um, okay, so we um, actually had our bids um, had to be due last week, and we opened them, and um, actually we um, kind of go through a little bit of a summary. Um, we're bidding out for a three-year contract. Um, the bid package was sent directly to five area contractors, whether they were the current contractors or two contractors that had actually asked to have them sent to them directly. We actually had um, six contractors send bids back, which is great because before, we, last time, I only got one for each of the projects, so it was nice to see some activity this time. Um, so we break up our bidding, our um, plowing into three different contracts because of the area and the um, diversity in space. Um, so the first project is the high school and SRTC center is one project. Project two actually um, is the Pride Willard Building Memorial Gym 
middle school and the uh, maintenance department um, is all done in project two. And project three is CJL, Lafayette, and MCS. And we actually have Lafayette broken out into a project. We have to do an A and a B just in case we decide to, um, we put a wording in there in case we decide to close either sell that building or close that building totally or whatever we decide to do. So I keep that one separate right now. Um, so we did a walkthrough um, and we had a few um, other contractors uh, show up for the walkthrough and Jason takes them out um, to each site that they're interested in doing a bid on, explains to them in detail what is involved because we have some very specific items like we can't use sand, you have to use salt. Um, uh, due to um, some of our drainage and stuff. So we, we go through that very specifically. The bid openings were handled on Jan June 5th. We had two contractors actually join us when we opened our bids. And um, we actually had two bids that were from one of the contractors for multiple years. So if they took all, the, all three of the projects, they would do it for a different price than if they did just if we picked and choose. And then another one they did it for six years. And so I had to go through and analyze that based on if I thought, um, I took and said, okay, if the increases happen over the next three years, would that six year bid be a good deal or not? And it did not um, actually, um, it was better to go with our lowest bids. Um, in, um, we actually pay our contracts based on a percentage wise. So we do our um, November 15th, we do 10%. December 15th, we do 15%. January 15th, we do 30%. February, we do 30%. March, we do 10%. And then April, we do 5%. Kind of, I think, trying to keep it with the majority of when the actual plowing happens. Um, the project one, um, the recommendation is to approve a service contract for snow removal for the high school by um, Tibbetts Farms in the amount of 72,000, 73 for year one, 73,000 for year two, and 74,000 for year three. So um, Paula, you're gonna wanna put Tibbetts Farm in your recommendation when you go to approve. Project two, um, which is um, going to LV Allen and Sons for 55,000 in year one, 65,000 for year two, and 75,000 for year three. And then how I talked about project uh, three gets separated into two. Uh, project 3A, which is CJL and MCS, is gonna go to HA uh, Stone and Sons. And it's for 34,200 the first year, 34,200 the second year, 34,400 for the third year. And then project three, which is just the Lafayette building is also HA Stone and Sons for $7,000 a year for each of those. So that is the summary. And then you have the wording to say for okay. the bid awards on your sheet. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a recommendation to award the 2023 through 2026 snow plowing bid for the Sanford High School and Regional Technical Center to Tibbet Farms as presented. I'll make that motion. Thank you very much. Motion made by Melissa, seconded by? I'll second. Thank you, Kelly. All in favor? All in favor. Snow plowing contract number two, recommendation to award the snow plowing bid for the Sanford Pride Elementary School Willard Building Memorial Gym, Sanford Middle School and Sanford Maintenance Building to LV Allen and Sons for 2023 through to 2026 as presented. I'll make that recommendation. Thank you, Kelly. Seconded by Amy. Okay, all in favor? All in favor, thank you. <coughs> and last but not least, recommendation to award the 2023 through 2026 no plowing bid for the Carl J. Lamb School, Margaret Chase School, and the separate one for Lafayette School to H.A. Stone and Sons as presented. I'll make that recommendation. Thank you, Kelly, seconded by? I'll second it. Melissa, thank you, and all in favor? All in favor. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, Cheryl. I, I just want to jump in and add that for Lafayette right now, just so people know, we are working towards being able to rent that building out in a way that's going to be able to cover expenses um, for that. So that's something that we're working towards to be able to roll that back into. And I expect to have more information com coming forward above the school committee to be able to do that. As we can uh, hold on to that building for now, we do have been pursuing and we do have interest in a temporary rental uh, to be able to cover those expenses and a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Uh, no old business. We're moving on to resignations and retirements. Sure, three resignations to announce. Emily Hansen is our pre-K ed tech at Carl J. Lamb. Mark Chevery, grade six math teacher at the middle school. And Jamie Humber, resource room teacher at K2 at Carl J. Lamb. I know uh, Mark and Jamie are moving to schools closer to their homes with that, which is uh, Understandable, but nonetheless still going to be a big loss for us as we thank them and wish them best of luck. Uh, staff appointments, a couple to announce. Uh, second shift custodian at the Sanford Middle School is Tony Warren Sr. And then our fall varsity cheering coach, Katrina Woodard at Sanford High School. And then uh, another stipend to announce, uh, extended school year ed tech, uh, Mary Rays uh, for at Margaret Chase Smith. And then a couple staff transfers, also wanting to announce uh, Armand uh, Dorian, the uh, second shift custodian at uh, Community Adult Dead and Bridge, as well as Central Office, will be moving over to second shift custodian at Margaret Chase Smith School. Maria Freschetti will be the, move, uh, the lead kitchen personnel uh, in our CACFP program at the high school, moving over to kitchen personnel at the middle school. Renee Bernier, uh, kitchen personnel at the middle school, the kitchen personnel over at Margaret Chase Smith. And then also Kathy Spencer, moving from a literacy ed tech to at Margaret Chase Smith uh, School to a, a ed tech literacy looping classroom over at Sanford Pride School for those transfers. Couple staff nominations that the school committee uh, can take action on. Um, well, actually, you yes, you, you can, even though you did give me permission to do this on June 5th. I think it would be make sense for the school committee to take action on two new positions. Uh, Lenore Williams as a uh, ESOL teacher at Margaret Chase Smith School for next year, and Brittany Burke as an art teacher at Carl J. Lamb. So the recommendation would be to accept the nominated professional staff as presented with one-year probationary contracts. I will make that recommendation to accept the nominated professional staff as presented with a one-year probationary contract. Thank you, Amy. I'll second that. Seconded by Kelly. Thank you very much. All in favor? All in favor. <laughs> Superintendent Nelson will nominate the following administrators for renewal contracts. Sure, so I'm, uh, I'm going to go through and reckon, uh, recommend these and then I've got an explanation because there are a couple changes. Um, but for uh, administrator nominations, nominating Mike Bailey, Sanford Middle School Assistant Principal, Sherry Barron, Carl J. Lamb School Principal, Stacy Bissell, Special Education Director for the District, Mark Bisson, Assistant Principal at Margaret Chase Smith School, Kristen Daly, Assistant Principal at Sanford Pride Elementary, Tammy Delaney as Assistant Special Ed Director, Amanda Doyle being recommended as the Sanford High School Principal, Tracy Hallisey as the Principal for Margaret Chase Smith School, Susan Inman the Principal at Sanford Pride Elementary, um, Beth Lambert as the Director of Curriculum, Trish Leet as the Assistant Principal at Carl J. Lamb School, Pam Lydon as the Principal of Sanford, Sanford Middle School, Joe Mastracchio Assistant Principal at Sanford Middle School, Jane Perkins as Community Adult Education Director, uh, Matt Peterman being nominated as Sanford Regional Technical Center Director, Mike Redman, Sanford Regional Technical Center Assistant Director, Zach Lemlin as our Athletic Director, Aaron Tremblay as Assistant Principal at the High School, and Troy Watts at the High School uh, Assistant Principal as well. Um, so you will notice a few changes there. Um, if we uh, look at uh, some of those changes, uh, I did have an opportunity to speak to many of our SRTC teachers and staff to get their thoughts on what they're looking for in the next director of SRTC. 
Um, obviously, it's important that the next director understands and values career and technical education, but also knows and understands the unique arrangement that we have with Sanford High School and our facilities. So I am pleased tonight to nominate Matt Peterman to serve as the director of SRTC. Uh, Matt's excited and well suited for this role. Prior um, to serving as the high school principal, Matt was the assistant director, assistant principal for SRTC, and he did work on the career pathways plan, and he was a liaison to help bring those two schools together in new facilities. So Matt understands the relationship between SRTC and the high school, and he'll be able to help SRTC continue developing its own identity while at the same time uh, having that shared identity with Sanford High School uh, in doing that. So um, I'm pleased to recommend Matt. And then as a corresponding one uh, for that, I'm also nominating Amanda Doyle for this uh, to be principal of Sanford High School, and that'll be effective July 1st. Uh, Amanda's background as a teacher and administrator, both in Sanford, as well as her administrative experience at Thornton Academy, I think is going to serve her well uh, in this uh, new leadership role. So while each of those schools will have its own leader, I think you can um, expect Matt and Amanda will continue to work closely in their positions to benefit the students and staff of both our high school and regional technical center, as well as the greater Sanford community. Uh, with that. So a little further information about those uh, administrator nominations that I present to you tonight for approval. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll make the recommendation to approve the nominations as presented. Yes, I make the recommendation. Amy, seconded. Seconded by Kelly. All in favor? All in favor. There are no policies and procedures to go over tonight. No items for future agenda. Last but not least is calendar announcements. Sure, as mentioned, tomorrow's the last day of school uh, for us uh, throughout the district. And uh, voting day tomorrow for the school budget on uh, June 13th. That's tomorrow, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then also, our um, we're not done with graduations. Sanford Community Adult Ed is going to hold their graduation, as mentioned, this Wednesday. Uh, right at uh, Willard School at Community Adult Education, and that kicks off at 7 p.m. Okay, thank you. It's been a long year. It's been a good year. Lots of work, lots of stuff done. Looking forward to the next one. And you three, thank you so much for all your work. It's been a pleasure having you here. And have a great summer. Be safe, be smart, and have fun. And good okay. luck tomorrow in those finals, you oh, yeah, two yeah. juniors, almost seniors. <laughs> Do you hear JP laughing because he doesn't have to? <laughs> anyway, anybody have any last words for the year? No? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Recommendation to adjourn at 6.56. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Seconded. Seconded by Melissa. All in favor? All in favor. <laughs> Good night, everybody.